Hey everyone, this is Eric Wu. Today we're on to Prom 20 on the 2011 AMC Tembi. The prom says that rhombus ABCD has side length 2 and angle B is 120 degrees. Region R consists of all points inside the rhombus that are closer to vertex B than any of the other three vertices. What is the area of R? The problem gives us a rhombus, rhombus ABCD. So let's just write it out here, rhombus ABCD. We have the conditions that its side length is 2. And we also know that angle B is 120 degrees. And the problem gives us a diagram. It looks like this. Our rhombus looks like this. And so this is A, B, C, D. So by the problem conditions, we know the side lengths are all two. This is a rhombus, so all the sides have equal length. And we know angle B is 120 degrees. In turn, this means angle D is also 120 degrees. Because by the definition of a rhombus, the opposite angles are equal. So now, since we know that the total sum of angles in a quadrilateral is 360 degrees, and we've already used 240 degrees, we'll just say used. What we mean by used is we already defined two angles, each one 120 degrees. So we have 120 degrees left, which means angle A plus angle C has to sum up to 120 degrees. And since they're opposite angles, they're equal, which means... Angle A is 60 degrees, and angle C is 60 degrees. Erasing this, and now let's just erase this and write what we found in our conditions. So we found that angle D is also 120 degrees, and we found that angle A and angle C are 60 degrees. And the problem wants us to find, let's write it in red, the problem wants to find find area of R. They define R as, so let's just draw the diagram that they gave us. The diagram looks something like this. Just a quick sketch. The diagram they gave us looks kind of like this. It's a pentagon, sort of. It's a pentagon shape. Actually, looks like this. And they want us to find the area of this. This is area R. And how they came up with this set of points is, so let's draw in the vertices really quick. This set of points R is a set of points that are closer to vertice B than any other vertice. So let's say we picked a point, let's do it in red. Let's say we picked a point here. This is in the area of R. That means that this segment, which is the distance from vertice B, is less than this distance, this distance, and this distance. And that's true for any point in this area R. So that's how they define the set of R. Let's erase this now. And instead of just plotting random points in the rhombus to see if they're closer to B and calculating those lengths, since that would be a lot of work, switching back to black, instead, we can do this. So we find the set of points closer to B than A instead of A, C, and D. And then number two, so actually let's not write all of that again since it's the same thing. So we can do it like this. This just means this is the same thing than C. So set of points closer to B than C. And finally, set of points closer to B than D. And if we find the intersection of these sets, the intersection will be the set of points that are closer to B than A, C, and D, which would be area R. And this is a much easier approach, since finding the set of points closer to one vertice than another single vertice is easier than finding the set of points that are closer to one vertice than compared to three vertices. So erasing this, let's just write a small summary here. Number one is B then A. Number two is B then C, and 
Number three is B than D. And let's just put in parentheses closer to. This is an E. Okay. And so first, looking at number one, so let's say we have the two points B and A. So let's say A is here and B is here. First, we'll connect a line between these two. And how we'll find the set of points in this plane that are closer to B than A is first we'll find the set of points that are equal, um, equal distance from A and B. And in this case, it would be the perpendicular bisector. So this line is the set of points that are equidistant from A and B. And this is because if we choose any point on here, let's say we chose this point, uh, let's call this point X. If we connect in lines AX and BX, then we would have two congruent triangles. This triangle, let's call this O. We'd have congruent triangles AOX and BOX. And since they're congruent, that means the, these side lengths are the same, which means that point X is equidistant from A and B. And this is true for any point X we pick along this line, since we can always construct two congruent triangles. So now we know that the set of points that are equidistant from two vertices is their perpendicular bisector. So how we'll find the points closer to B than A? It's simply the set of points that are on the B side of this perpendicular bisector. So it would be all points in the plane over here. All these points over here are closer to B than A. So now that we've got this, let's redraw our rhombus. So erasing this, our rhombus looks like this. Something like this. And this is A, B, C, D. So now, to find the set of points closer to, them, to B than A, it's simply the perpendicular bisector and all the points to the right of it. So, let's just draw it here. This is perpendicular. Actually, we don't need to consider the points outside of the rhombus, since that's not included in the area. So, it looks something like this. These are equal, and this is a perpendicular. And actually, this line meets point D, and how we can prove that is by doing this. So let's draw this line in just really briefly. We look at our previous conditions, and we knew that this is 60, and this is 60. And since this is a rhombus, and we have this segment BD, it's dividing this angle into two equal segment, two equal angles. So this 120 degrees would be divided into two. This would be 60, 60, and 60. So we actually have equilateral triangles. This rhombus consists of two equilateral triangles. And this is simply the height of the equilateral triangle, which means that it has to meet at point D. So we're just doing that really quickly. Let's erase all this. We just did that to show that this perpendicular bisector meets at D. So we have this, and all the points in this rhombus that are closer to B than A would be this set, right here. So now we do the next one, number two, it's B then C. So again, we draw the perpendicular bisector, and since this is an equilateral triangle, it meets at point D again. This is perpendicular, and these are these is bisected. And all the points that are closer to B than C would be on the left side, since B is on the left side of this. Well, left side from my point of view. But then, that would be all these points. So right now, we have that the intersection is this. So for now, let's just erase these. Some messy erasing, but... We're just trying to get the point across. So let's redraw this, redraw this. So right now we have that the intersection of number one and number two is this sort of kite shape. And the final one is B then D. So in this diagram, B and D actually aren't connected, but we can connect them. So let's just draw this here. 
and the perpendicular bisector actually passes through A and C, since this is a rhombus and by definition. So we know that this is a right angle. We know that this is bisected here. And so all the points above this line here are closer to B than D since B is on this side, the upper side of this perpendicular bisector. So the final intersection would be in this case since all of this here is above this line. The intersection of 1, 2, and 3 would be this pentagon. So that's how we achieve this pentagon. So let's just erase all this. We actually don't need it. And now the way we achieve this area of set of points that's closer to B than these three vertices, we now know something that we didn't in the diagram the problem gave us, and that's that these are bisected and these are bisected as well. And this will help us find the area. And we also know something in the diagram that we didn't know before, that this is 30 degrees, since this segment splits the 60 degree into two. So this is 30 degrees. We know that this is a right angle now, which in turn means that this is a 60 degree, since the sum of the angles in a triangle adds up to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 30 is 60. So this would also be 60 degrees. And we also know that this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. So let's draw this one better. So let's make this line solid and 60 degrees. And this is a right angle. So now we have two 30, 60, 90 triangles, which is a special right triangle. So we don't need this anymore. Let's erase this. And Let's actually just erase all this and make our diagram bigger. We can get rid of all those colors since that was just finding the intersection. So we have something like this. Well, actually, that's a little off balance. So it looks like this. And I think that's good enough. So, recalling our previous smaller diagram, we remember that it consisted of this line, this line, so this was the perpendicular bisector, uh, the other perpendicular bisector. This is what our pentagon was made up of, and we have this line, recalling that this is 90, we knew this is 30, 60, 60, 60, 30, and 60. So we have that these are 30, 60, 90 triangles, and these are special right triangles. They have the property of, if we know this side length, the shortest side length is x, then we know this is x root 3 and 2x. So recalling this, we remember that this side length was 2, given by the problem conditions, and since it's bisected, that means this is 1, and this is 1, this is 1, and this is 1. And instead of just finding this pentagon's area, we can find this big triangle's area right here. Let's do it in red. This triangle area here. And then subtract these two triangles, and we'll have the pentagon. Since triangle areas are much easier to find than pentagon areas, since triangle areas are simply base times height over 2. So looking at this, and comparing these two, we have the side opposite the 60 degree angle is 1. So x root 3 equals 1. That means x equals 1 over root 3, which rationalizes into root 3 over 3. So that means we know this side is root 3 over 3. And similarly, since these are congruent, we have this is root 3 over 3. So now we have the base and the height. So this, the area of this triangle, let's erase this. The area of this triangle is 1 times root 3 over 3 over 2, which equals root 3 over 6. And we have another one, root 3 over 6, which equals root 3 over 3. So the area we're subtracting from this big triangle is root 3 over 3. So let's write it over here. We have this big triangle minus root 3 over 3. 
So the last step is to find the area of this big triangle. So again, we look at this 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's draw our little diagram of special values here. x, x root 3, 2x. And again, now this time we know the hypotenuse is 2. So we have 2x equals 2. So x equals 1. So this is 1. And we know that this length, which is opposite of the 60 degree angle, which in this case would be here, is x root 3. And we know x equals 1, so this side equals root 3, which in turn means this is root 3 since these two triangles are congruent. So we have the base is 2 root 3 and the height is 1. So the area of this big triangle is 2 root 3 times 1 over 2, which equals root 3. So we can plug in root 3 here. Erasing this, we're almost done. So the area of this pentagon is simply root 3 minus root 3 over 3. Root 3 minus root 3 over 3. This is root 3 root 3 over 3. Since this simplifies into root 3. So now that we have the same denominator, we can subtract. And this ends up equaling 2 root 3 over 3. And we'll write our answer choice here. This value, 2 root 3 over 3, is answer choice C. This is our solution for problem 20 on the 2011 AMC 10B. I'll see you guys next time.